Entrepreneurs, we are a crazy group of people. Um, we are a group of people who, whether we have a dream or some sort of really nifty idea that we think is right for the times, will literally throw almost all risk to the wind and go headlong into one of the most crushing experiences anyone can possibly imagine, trying to actually solve the problem or chase that dream. But uh, entrepreneurs carry with them a particular uh, quality that you don't really usually find elsewhere. And whether you're uh, a career person who is thinking about becoming an entrepreneur or you're an entrepreneur thinking about trying a new project like joining a career or joining a corporate job, um, there's a lot of value that can exist within just that decision alone, that desire alone, and the inherent, um, let's say, lack of fear of the risks that come with it. So um, I've had a pretty unique experience in my life. Um, I set out to be an actor, never expected to be an entrepreneur, just happened to ended up starting my own businesses before I ever even actually worked a real job for the most part. So after 11 years plus of owning my own businesses, um, I decided to go seek out a corporate job. Um, I did happen to seek it out in a really cool industry. I mean, it would have to be cool for me to want to leave entrepreneurship, but um, coming to the cannabis space, when I got the job at the cannabis, um, what a, a lot of people don't realize is that that gave me access to a position within a very major media conglomerate. Excuse me, the cannabis is owned uh, by a major media conglomerate, and um, and so the corporate structure that I entered when I was working for it was that uh, media conglomerate's corporate structure for the most part, adapted to the environment, of course. So um, having been only an entrepreneur and then being dropped essentially into a corporate environment, um, there was a perspective I took into that position um, that gave me some really good um, observational uh, abilities while I was there um, and allowed me to keep everything I was doing in perspective in a way that I could find out first and foremost, is it effective to hire an entrepreneur at a corporate job? Secondly, um, what do you need to do to give that entrepreneur the ability to succeed? And then uh, thirdly, what does that entrepreneur need to do themselves if you're thinking about making this jump uh, to be able to work in a corporate environment? So one of the things that I learned um, and it totally got wrong going into it was that um, while entrepreneurism or entrepreneurship and owning a business is incredibly chaotic, um, you never know what's going to happen one day the next, ups and downs. Uh, one day you could be fighting for $1,000 to pay payroll and the next day end up getting a million dollars in investment. And that like swing is insane, right? So there's a lot of chaos that exists in the startup environment. Um, and each month you're solving new things. Um, so going into a corporate environment, I really expected there were polar opposites to the spectrum that, you know, if, if startups are super chaotic, then corporations are going to be quite the opposite. Um, you know, such that maybe the bureaucracy was so heavy that it sort of stretched the gravity of the organization away from, you know, uh, a normal organizational tree to like a flat disc. That's kind of what I expected. Things would move super slowly. The gravity would be real heavy top down, tons of managerial bureaucracy. And to a certain extent that does exist, but, um, you know, and I imagine all corporations are different. I know if you work for Dell, uh, that is exactly what it's like. Um, but what I found was working for a media company, it, it actually felt more chaotic to me than working for a startup. Um, and I'll say chaotic in a different way than the chaos you experience in the startup. Um, that chaos, for whatever reason, I'm comfortable in. But the chaos of the corporate environment, I was not. And, um, and so I went into it knowing this was going to be an experiment for me. I went into it, into it knowing that I would have to learn a certain number of uh, different ways to communicate and uh, different ways to observe human behavior because uh, while entrepreneurs can tend to be, you know, wear their hearts on their sleeve and be very authentic, uh, the corporate environment is anything but authentic. There are a few people in that environment that really do, uh, uh, you know, keep authenticity uh, at the forefront. Barrett Raven, my brother, uh, ha happy to see you joining the live stream. Uh, he's one of those such people. When he works for a corporate environment, he's very much himself. Um, and that's what I was like there. Um, but I found that, you know, uh, very few people in that environment are being 100% forthright at any given time. Um, there's a ton of politics that are at play 
in corporate worlds. This is nothing new. I'm not making some sort of like unbelievable observation here to you. But um, as entrepreneurs, we don't like to play politics. That's not something that we really are interested in. We're interested in getting some actual problems solved and working towards solving those problems and making a, a solid culture out of the team. Um, but the, the environment in the corporate world sort of fights against this. Um, this isn't to say that everybody's, you know, looking to cut each other's throat or stab each other's backs to crawl up the ladder, although those people do exist. Um, it's to say that there's so much fear around how things are perceived from leadership. And there's so much fear uh, about pushing against leadership, especially when you know that there's a, sort of a hopeless endeavor behind that, that there's not a whole lot you can change, that it sort of forces people and wedges them down into uh, playing the political game, which is to say that they don't ever really speak their mind. Um, they become a little bit more affirmative than they should be. And then in closed doors, uh, will negate that affirmation, you know, like in a meeting, oh yeah, I think that's a great idea. And then behind closed doors, like, God, this person's an idiot. We got to do something different. Um, and that whole political machine, uh, is, is really difficult to navigate to a certain extent. You're never going to succeed in a corporate environment unless you do. This is something I learned. Um, I joined this one saying, I will not play politics. I am going to be 100% myself. That's what they hired me here to be. Uh, clearly, I'm an entrepreneur, and if you're going to hire an entrepreneur, you're going to know how to utilize them to allow them to be what they need to be. You're going to give me the room to breathe and make innovations happen myself, right? Um, the fact of the matter is that's not the case. They, they love the idea of hiring the entrepreneur because they think innovatively, they, um, they're nimble, they are willing to, uh, they're self-starters and they're willing to endure incredible amounts of pain to get things solved. Um, however, they like the idea of it in practice, that's not in any way how they operate. So while they might hire entrepreneurs because it sounds good, because they can pitch it well, because um, you know, on the surface, it sounds like the single most valuable thing that you could bring into an organization. The fact of the matter is they tend to starve us of air. Um, often I was working with my sales associates and they would look at me and say, you feel like an entrepreneur in a box, like you're kind of caged in and unable to like move and do what you want to do. Some of the things they were talking about were systems. So here's another thing where corporations can crush the innovation and nimbleness of an entrepreneur. Um, I was brought in specifically to run a, sort of a startup project within a corporation. And so it really seemed to make sense to hire an entrepreneur to do that. I had to think in innovatively, I had to be nimble, I had to come up with some new ideas. I had to follow new states joining the cannabis uh, conversation and you know find out ways to very quickly uh, acquiesce to those new states and um, start to generate more market share there. There. And, um, and and yet I was forced to follow systems that were you know sort of industry or not industry wide uh, corporation wide um, systems that didn't apply at all to what we were trying to accomplish but did apply to the major company at large right now those systems took up more than half of my time I spent more than half of all of my professional time in this position literally just putting numbers into spreadsheets so that I could tell people things the way they wanted to be told. Um, what I could have done in lieu of that and what I do in my own business is in lieu of all of that reporting and all of those systems that I had to follow, um, it, it's like three things. A, using a P&L, which by the way, I rarely ever got access to um, because I wasn't in the right position or whatever. Uh, just looking at the P&L at the end of every week, what money's going in, what money's coming out. Um, looking at the business strategy and saying, are we on target with the business strategy? Where do we need to hit benchmarks and goals? And then reporting those in very simple bullet points. And then thirdly, just looking at sales numbers and making sure that our pipeline and everything is following suit to what those goals are. Um, it's, you know, a check-in once a week. It's not something that takes up half of my day every day. And yet that's what happens in a corporate environment. So, you know, the, to me, I was trying constantly to wiggle out of these things. I, you know, I was trying to set new systems for myself or make myself the exception to the rule. And every single time I did that, I was grading against the politics of this organization. And um, in any organization, this is going to be the dynamic. Uh, uh, not any, uh, it, it, most organizations, this is going to be the dynamic. I'll try to not be too absolutist with this. Um, however, for the most part, this is what we're talking about. Systems that are existing because a legacy company that has existed for a long amount of time 
is going to build a bunch of different things that they stitch together over time and adapt over time to solve a problem that most likely has already been solved in a very simple way with some new innovation, some new platform, or just better systems thinking. Um, they don't really follow systems thinking in corporations and instead um, tend to just um, want to keep what's existing in place but make it better. And those tiny little incremental improvements upon existing legacy systems turn into a massive pile of band-aids that when you try to sift through is literally impossible to use. Um, training on those systems is really difficult to, to adapt to and the entire time as an entrepreneur you're left thinking why am I wasting all this time on bullshit? Because that's really ultimately what it, what it boils down to. The end result in this is that someone knows something about what's going on. So if it takes 50% of my professional time to tell somebody what's going on, we have a major, major problem here, Houston. We need to fix some things. And these systems that they really make us work under, um, they, they flatten us out. And also, they crush our um, hope and inspiration that we should be taking into our role because we're just left um, sullied. We're, we're angry or we're frustrated or we're annoyed. You know, I, I have to call in favors at the end of a Friday because I happened to be out of town on a convention and forgot to put my numbers in the reporting spreadsheet in the right time because I didn't need to hit a deadline so all the reporting can be, you know, uh, appended and sent up the chain instead of me just being like, hey, here's where I'm at. This is what you need to know. See ya. So, um, so you know, you've got politics, you got systems, um, and and then thirdly, and Chris, you bring up a good point in the live stream here about how to reward employees to do better. When you're talking about entrepreneurs specifically as employees, you're talking about people that whether you give them equity or not are going to take an extreme sense of ownership into what they do. I took an extreme sense of ownership into the cannabis to the sense that I still really feel like I am an owner in that business, even though I never had any equity. Uh, see you, Jim. Thanks for watching. And so the fact of the matter is that if I'm going to care enough to do something, I'm going to care enough to do it to its absolute fullest potential. Uh, I'm going to put all of myself into it because that's just like the mode I've worked in. You know what I mean? Uh, I've owned my own businesses, so therefore I have had a sense of ownership and I've only known it. If you don't stoke that fire, if instead you use your systems and your culture and your politics to pour water on it and just stamp it out, what are you bringing me in for, right? Um, you need to figure out how to uh, stoke that sense of ownership, how to reward that sense of ownership, how to make the employees in general, but especially the entrepreneurial employees, feel like they have a stake in the growth of this and that you respect and trust their opinion. I don't think I can make that point any more clear. Respecting and trusting their opinion because they are something different in your organization that you're looking to to help inspire you to do something different, to help you innovate in a way that you've never innovated before, you have to trust and let them be the leaders that they're supposed to be. Um, you can't have them apply to your systems and legacy thinking and your sense of uh, approval. <clears throat> That's not a rewarding process. It's not a rewarding system. It's a, a system of constant rejection. And um, and corporations, a lot of them tend to think also in the sense of cutting and whittling things down so that you are having to work with the least amount of resources possible to do the most amount of insane things. So while entrepreneurs are capable of this, I was always capable of it. Uh, what I was working with at the cannabis was minimal and what I was able to pull off was really quite impressive. And, um, and that's just knowing the fact that there were very little to work with. And so you need to be able to reward me, not necessarily with just resources, but at least with the trust and the sense of ownership that I am going to take into it and allowing me to make decisions in a nimble fashion and make my own systems work for what I'm trying to accomplish, even if they're different, because that's the point of bringing in an entrepreneur. You don't bring them in to make them you, you bring them in to help you be something a little bit better. So if you think of entrepreneurs as a whetstone and you as a very, as the corporation, a very, very dull knife, you don't bring us in to try to, uh, you know, uh, make the knife duller. You, you bring us in to sharpen the knife. That's what we're there for. We can sharpen the knife. So that's a really dumb analogy, but whatever. You get my point. Um, now, when you're an entrepreneur in this environment, it helps to understand a few things. Number one, corporations. Actually, you don't need to be an entrepreneur to know this lesson. All corporations give you a sense of stability that doesn't exist. There is no stability in having a job over being an entrepreneur. There's different stability, 
there's different dynamics at play. Um, some people I know have worked a job for 35 solid years in one location and, you know, they've been uh, great, but have they been stable? Um, I think you would find that most people in senior positions who have been in a corporation for 20, 30 years have been constantly dodging being cut loose the entire time they've been there. doesn't matter how long they've been there. They've most likely been in some way uh, fearful every year that cuts come down the line that their position is going to be cut. They themselves have to constantly be the ones cutting positions in their department. So they just see sort of an inevitability coming down the line. So the idea that getting a job in general is going to make you stable or comfortable or protected is sort of a myth. And, um, and that's because even the biggest, most successful corporations who are making 25 million something in profit are still for whatever reason making cutbacks. And I saw that happen. So, um, so, uh, you know, the idea here is that an entrepreneur in this environment is going to experience a very different set of um, dynamics, but stability will not be one of them. And if you go into it understanding that and understanding that this is more of an experiment for you, one of the perspectives I found very useful in a corporate environment was knowing that it wasn't going to be stable, knowing nothing was guaranteed, and realizing everything was just as experimental as it was in the startup world. So I was constantly um, observing what was going on and reminding myself that this was just the corporate environment at play and I am involved in a social experiment of sorts, right? This is like, you know, imagine you're a sociologist and you're curious about how people behave in taxi cabs. So you go and become a taxi cab driver for a little while, right? For me, um, I wanted to see what it was like to work in a corporate environment. And so I joined one and treated it like a social experiment, constantly learning and adapting, um, not taking anything personally, because I mean, at this point, I've already taken so much shit personally, there's nothing they're going to say to me that's going to hurt. Um, and, and trying my best to adapt to their environment, to their language, their lexicon, to their expectations, while at the same time still keeping myself the entrepreneurial asset that I thought they wanted. And so in that environment, um, there's so much about that conversation that you have to adapt to. Um, there's so many acronyms you've got to learn. Um, there's, there's, you know, sort of the bullshit you have to play, the politics you have to play. But if you're constantly experimenting throughout this, uh, you'll realize that you can adapt a lot faster using your entrepreneurial mindset in a corporate environment. Um, you're not going to be familiar with these systems and every system is different and you're not going to be familiar with what their expectations are, but you can learn them way faster than most new hires. And you can also uh, detach yourself from the idea that your performance and their feedback are, you know, not mutually exclusive and that they're not talking about you specifically. Um, you know, so that, that was to me the most effective thing that I uh, employed while I was there was the idea that this is experimentation and that um, I, I have something different to bring to the table, but I also need to understand how to speak their language and make it effective for them um, and help them all win. If you can uh, find a way to work within a department or help your bosses look better by accomplishing a certain win that they can report up. Uh, these are things that, that really help improve your overall environment and get you a little bit more access to resources and a little bit more, uh, let's say, a few more champions in the upper uh, management structure. Um, but you never know when those people are going to go. The person who brought me in and hired me uh, ended up gone and sued by the Denver Post quite uh, a few months later, but right in the middle of a major thing that I was working on, a major event I was working on. So. That was the guy who hired me. Uh, he and I had, had had a past. Now he was gone. So, you know, I was in an environment where there goes my biggest advocate. So all of that, you know, sort of expectation and work I had put into that relationship is now gone. And I had to shift my focus on the other relationships. And so keeping in mind that everything is going to change rapidly, chaotically, insanely faster than you ever thought it would. Um, that's the one thing to keep in mind learning how to adapt to their language, learning how to adapt to their expectations and their systems is another thing. Um, I haven't talked about culture yet because really I didn't experience much of one. Um, and I have yet to have experienced corporations that are really good at actually having one. Um, and many of the people I ask at any corporation I work with, it doesn't matter if they're a client or not. Uh, if I ask 
them what is your culture oftentimes I get a set of features you know we've got time off for uh, you know uh, vacations and uh, our employees party together and we've got you know foosball tables and uh, we let people take a day off to go surfing whenever they want you know what I mean but they're not talking about like what the actual culture means what what it means to work there uh, which is what culture actually is so um, you know in corporations trying to nail down the culture is incredibly difficult if not impossible and that's another thing that was really difficult as an entrepreneur and, and a bit dismaying because for me I latch on to culture 100% I become a cultural cheerleader I was sort of I, I created a culture or, or, or rather harnessed a culture at the cannabis that uh, we were able to sink our teeth into but outside of that you know it was just too big and I couldn't really affect that change um, so find what you can affect try to make a culture around it whether it's a project a team a department um, you know, whatever aspect of the company that you're working with and create a culture around it and try to um, define that culture as best as you possibly can like you would at your own startups. Um, and that can create such unity and trust within your own team that at least you can be extremely effective there. The managers may not ever, um, you know, really uh, understand the value there and understand what you're putting time into and you don't really even need to report upon it. All you need to do is make sure that you can control what you can control because everything else is going to be outside of your control. And those systems, the way that they expect, uh, what they expect of you, um, the, the way that they expect you to work with almost no resources and continually working with less and less and less resources year after year, that stuff, you're not going to be able to control that. And, um, and you're going to find yourself trying to, and that doesn't work. I learned that real quick. So uh, you can't control it, um, and and learning that lesson quicker uh, is is a good thing for you. Um, and you know, um, and ultimately, you know, realizing that you're in a different environment and you need to experiment. These are the things that are going to make you successful in a corporate environment. Um, corporations looking to hire entrepreneurs need to give them the room to breathe. You have to trust us. You have to understand that you hired us for a reason. And when we're telling you that we can't apply to a particular system or we can't apply to a particular process or that those processes and those systems are preventing us from doing something that we are really brought on to do, you need to empower us to be able to make the decisions that we need to make to make it better. Otherwise, we're not able to sharpen any of the knives and all we're doing is, is becoming ineffective, frustrated, unrewarded, and we're gonna be gone the single minute that we get a chance to be gone. And trust me, people will want us. So um, that's my advice on being an entrepreneur in a corporate environment. Um, if you are in a corporate environment and you're looking to jump into the entrepreneurship world, um, don't be afraid of stability as a reason not to do it. You don't have stability now. You have the semblance of stability. You have the illusion of stability, most likely. Um, maybe you actually have it, but for the most part, you don't. And any of this can change on you on a dime. So the entrepreneurial environment is just the same. Don't be afraid to jump into it. Go ahead and do it if you've been waiting. And if you're on the other side of the fence like I've been, hopefully some of this has been helpful for you and make you a little bit more successful. Of course, you can always reach out to me for more advice or more feedback about what I experienced while I was there um, and uh, you know ways that you might be able to adapt to your particular environment. Thanks for watching.